Hey, in this video we're going to take a look at the newton raphson method. Uh, we'll just start off with a quick recap in case you can't quite remember how it works. Um, if you're already quite comfortable with it, feel free to just skip ahead to the example, it should be in a chapter below. Um, right, so what's the newton raphson method? Well, the newton raphson method is just basically a method for finding um, out where a function is equal to zero. So if you've got some function f of x, like I've drawn at the side here, um, we're basically looking for that orange dot where f of x equals zero. You'll probably, and usually will have some kind of starting point involved as well, but I'll talk about that, about that in a second. Now, why can't we just solve f of x for zero and just use, do some algebra on it and solve it? Well, as you may have already discovered, there are a lot of times when you cannot actually solve something. There are only a very small number of equations you can actually solve analytically. So this is why we need to do some kind of numerical method to find out what that value is. So the way Newton, the newton raphson method works is pretty straightforward. Um, so let's just have a, have a bit of a go at it. So geometrically, all we start at a certain point, and I'm just going to, going to call it xk because I'm imagining we've done sort of k steps already. All we do is we basically go up to our function and then we draw the tangent line at that point. So you'll notice that the newton raphson method uh, in order to use it, we need to know what the derivative of our curve is, otherwise we can't make this tangent line. So we draw that line, and then we just find out where that line intersects the x-axis, and that is our new point, xk plus 1. And so what happens is we just do this over and over again, so we'd start at xk plus 1, do the same thing, go up to a curve, draw a tangent line, um, and then find the new intersection, which might be, I don't know, around about there. Um, and eventually that's going to converge onto the point that we're after. That's pretty much all there is to it. So there is a formula for the newton raphson method, but if you forget it, then it's actually pretty straightforward to work out just using this picture we just sketched. So let's just, I'll just show you how you do that, just in case we forgot how that works. So we know that the tangent line to a function is given by the formula y minus y naught is equal to the gradient times x minus x naught. That's our general formula for a tangent line, uh, or for a straight line that goes through for, at the point x naught, y naught. So the x naught, y naught for us is going to be this point on the line. That's the point that we know. So it'll be y minus, well, the y, the y naught is going to be f of x k. The slope is going to be the derivative at xk. And then x minus x naught, well, the x naught that we know is our point xk. That's the equation for our tangent line. And set it to 0 to find xk plus 1. So that means we're just going to make y equal to 0, and we're going to make x into xk plus 1. So we'll get um, y is going to be 0. So negative f of xk is equal to f prime of xk. And x is going to be xk plus 1. That's going to be the intersect value, xk. And if we just rearrange this slightly, we get our Newton update formula, which says that this xk plus 1 value is just equal to xk minus f of xk over f prime of xk. So really all we have to do is find out, take our function, assuming we can calculate its derivative, uh, that we didn't then just repeat that process over and over again until we find, until we're close enough to our value and it seems to stop changing or it's accurate enough for us. It's worth pointing out this isn't the only way of finding um, the root of a function or the place where the function equals zero. And in fact, this one is sometimes not the best because it does require that we do know how to calculate that derivative. There are other methods you can come up with that don't actually need to do this. The only thing that's a bit worse about them is they'll tend to be a little bit slower. The nice thing about the Newton's method or newton raphson method is that it converges to your answer in only a few steps. Okay, so let's just see how it works with this problem that we've got here. So we want to find, use the newton raphson method to find the positive solution of e to the 2x equals x plus 3. And if you try and solve this one yourself, you'll have a lot of difficulty because you cannot actually find an analytical solution there. So it often pays to have a little bit of a sketch of what's going on, just so we 
uh, a little bit clearer about what we should expect to find here. So if I draw on x plus 3, that's y equals x plus 3, so that value will be 3. And I also draw on e to the 2x, e to the 2x is going to look something like that. So what we're after is this point where these two curves meet. There'll be another point where they meet, which is going to be down um, in the down here, um, and we want want to make sure we don't accidentally find that one. So what we'll do is we'll just make sure when we do our iteration that we start somewhere relatively close to where we think it might be, and then go from there. And the other little problem we have is that our function is not currently in the form f of x equals zero, the problem we're trying to solve. So what we'll do is we will solve, we're going to have to re, just rearrange it slightly to make it an f of x that is zero at the point we want. So solve f of x equals zero, where f of x, all we'll, just do, all we'll do is just make it one thing minus the other, e to the 2x minus x plus 3, which would be minus x minus 3. And if we can find out where that's zero, then that's the point that we're after. Cool. All right, so we need to know the derivative of our function. Um, so let's just calculate that. That will give us f prime of x is going to be, well, e to the 2x differentiates to itself, and then there's a factor 2 out the front from the chain rule, minus it, uh, and the x differentiates to 1, and the negative 3 goes away to nothing. Okay, and so that means our update formula, if we just copy it from over there, is going to be xk plus 1 equals xk minus, now our function, e to the 2x minus x minus 3, divided by our derivative 2 e to the 2x, and there should be x, xk, sorry, try that again e to the 2xk minus xk minus 3 over 2 e to the 2xk minus 1. And what should happen, as so long as we start in the right place, this should quite quickly approach the answer that we want. Now, it's actually kind of best to do this one in a computer, so I'm going to do that. So I'll switch over to my computer. Let's just... And again, I'm going to use this programming language called Julia just to help me out here. Um, so what I'll do, and you might want to do it in Python or any other language you know, or even you can, this is a simple enough calculation, you can even do it on a calculator without too much drama. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to define my, two, my function in its derivative. So my function was e to the 2x. Most languages, e is given by an exp function. Um, and then I'll define f prime of x for my derivative function. That's 2 e to the 2x minus 1. And let's choose a starting value for xk. Well, we know it's going to be positive, so why don't we just, just decide that it's going to be 1 for our starting value. If we end up converging to a negative solution, we might try another one, but should be fine. So what we want to do is we want to go, we want to find that x new using that update formula. So it's going to be our previous one minus, in fact, we can just do it this way, f of xk over f prime of xk. What that'll do is it will update, um, it will find us a new x value from our old ones so if we do that. Ah, very nice. Now, if I do it again, I'll get the same thing because I haven't actually updated what xk is. So what I might actually do is I might add in a couple of extra steps. I might just print out the difference between x new and xk because when that's small enough, then I've decided that I've had enough and I've, I can stop. And then I will also just make sure that I update xk to be that x new value. So when I go again, it, xk will be the one I had before. Okay, so what we should see here is, okay, I'm going to hide that last one. So what we're seeing here, what's actually been printed out here is the difference. So you can see that's going away to zero. And so what is my xk value or my x new value? Well, it's converged to um, 0 0.6469, etc. quite quickly.